We'll begin at the number three spot with a trial presented at the AHA by Dr. Mike Gibson, the Atlas ACS2 TIMI51 trial. With all of the antiplatelet advances in acute coronary syndromes, this trial looked at adding a low dose of an anticoagulant on top of largely dual antiplatelet therapy. So using rivaroxaban 2.5 milligrams twice a day, about a quarter of the dose, there was a significant reduction in cardiovascular death and myer stroke and indeed total mortality as compared with placebo, again on top of dual antiplatelet therapy in most patients. So this is a bit of a paradigm shift to see whether one could add a low-dose anticoagulant, not full dose, uh, to see about further improving outcomes and indeed mortality. Now there is an increase in bleeding that was seen and so uh, this will be reviewed carefully to see which patients this might apply to. At the number two spot in a related uh, study, I picked out the Aristotle trial. This was presented at the ESC and looked at apixaban, another factor 10A inhibitor used in anti, uh, AFib uh, for antithrombotic therapy for stroke prevention. And this was the proverbial home run in that it showed, set out to show non-inferiority to warfarin and did, but indeed went on to show superiority in stroke prevention. It also showed a reduction in uh, intracranial hemorrhage mortality and bleeding. And so it reduced everything, both on the bleeding and the efficacy side of the equation. And so that is under review by FDA, but a very exciting advance, and that in the background of the other uh, novel anticoagulant showing similar, although not quite as dramatically positive results. And at the number one spot is the PARTNER trial. Back at the ACC, the PARTNER cohort B study was presented, and this showed equivalence of the percutaneous valve uh, implantation for aortic stenosis versus valve replacement uh, by surgery. There were slight differences in the outcomes, but uh, that combined with the PARTNER B cohort, where the uh, percutaneous valve had significant reduction in mortality relative to medical therapy led to approval of this device, which now clinically is revolutionizing the way we approach severe aortic stenosis. So with this year's final cardiology countdown, I'm Chris Cannon.